Hello, I'm Stephen Ho, technical analyst, trader and founder of The Stop Hunter. And in this video, I'm going to take a stab at explaining how you can use Fibonacci for your trading and investing. It does seem a weird concept. I agree with that, but it does work and it's been used more and more. And I think it's very important that you know how to use it, like I say, in your trading and investing. So I'm going to give you a starter, go through the basics, explain a bit about why it is and the tools that you can use and the derivatives of Fibonacci you can use inside your charting packages to help you with your trade and risk management, you know, strategies, you know, targets, profits, exits, all those sort of things. So let's not hang around and let's dive straight in. Now I promised that we'd look at Fibonacci in a bit more detail so here we go so there's a lot to it but all you really need to know it's all about behavior and psychology and also about human and market interaction. It is in essence a self-fulfilling prophecy as to the reason why it works. And if you want to get back into the nitty gritty of Fibonacci, then you can do. Um, but you might have seen it when you throw a stone into a pond. The ripples are all Fibonacci. And it has been used throughout time in all sorts of application, architecture, etc. But it does work however strange the concept is. And it works in all time frames. And that's really because technology now has made it very easy to use this type of tool over your charts and everybody is doing it. The key numbers you need to take away from Fibonacci are 0 0.618, 0 0.382 and the zero and one lines that you use to find the high and lows. And it is a great tool for finding support and resistance points. That means it's very good for our risk management and trade management of our trades and is placed on top of the price chart. And all you need to know is where the low and the high are. And this is the problem of Fibonacci, it's very discretionary, but everyone's doing the same sort of thing. And here you can see on the FTSE 100 here, these arrows are around the points of Fibonacci lines and the price just keeps bouncing to and fro around these lines, proving that the Fibonacci lines work. And I could show you hundreds of charts like this, they just work. So all you need to do is find the obvious high and lows of the trend and then place the Fibonacci around these points and then that will draw the lines in between for you and as you can see on the FTSE 100 there it was a great tool to use to find support and resistance levels. So how do we create the Fibonacci lines? Well they're placed as I said on top of the price and these lines are created automatically but you've got to find the high and low and I like to use a three different time period setup uh, to create a more accurate Fibonacci picture um, but like I say there at the bottom all charting software should have this Fibonacci functionality now it is very common used in all sorts of markets and types of trader So this is my three step approach to setting the Fibonacci lines and we've got here the FTSE 100. It's a daily high Kanashi chart. You can use this approach across all charts, Renko, Line Break, Kagi, it works everywhere. And first of all, we need to break it down into time periods of the short, medium and long term. So I start with the long term first and go back over the previous year and look for the obvious highs and lows and we can see the beginning of 2020 and to the spring of 2020 look like that obvious highs and lows so we find our Fibonacci setup lines we draw them on we've got a nice double top there on the FTSE 100 we draw them back down and to the low we place them like so and that's our long-term support and resistance setup 
and is there anything obvious that we can see at the moment well there's around this five nine hundred area there's a lot of noise at the moment both to the upside and the downside support and resistance and then below that maybe five four fifty around here and again up here at six five seventy six what you know six six hundred zone so that's the long term part of the equation and now we go to the medium term so that's like the last you know three to six months maybe well from zero to six months i like to look just in case there's some obvious nearby highs and lows but if we go over that period and remember this isn't 100 percent exact science okay so if those highs and lows appear just to either side don't worry you know of those time bands don't worry too much because this is a very discretionary subjective approach using fibonacci so part two again we're going to look for our highs and lows so i can see this one back in june and the lows may be if we're going to take yeah, down here in september so that's going to be our next zone so again we draw on those fibonacci lines actually because the price has been ranging for a while on the FTSE 100 in between this 5760 to 6230 these bands are going to be tight and it's starting to look a little bit messy and it's going to get messier still because we now move on to the third part which is to then draw on the short term stuff so zero to a month or so is plenty any short term obvious action well the lows are as of you know the part two and the highs may be here in mid-september so we draw that on there's our highs down to the lows now at the moment that looks a complete unreadable mess so what we do then is zoom in on the chart we pull it open and what we're looking for is overlaps in those three time periods because i believe the more those different sub times you know the long medium and short overlap the more important the numbers are so we've got you know double overlap here double overlap there double overlap there it's close here so these are where i'd be taking important numbers for so we've got 5760 uh, we've got this overlap here at 5950 another one up at 6140 6230 and six three five five so i'd be using those as either support or resistance you know for stops targets to give me a more i like to use a friendly fibonacci and i think more accurate way of using fibonacci for setting those sort of levels now there are other forms of Fibonacci that you can also use and they can be hidden away in the charting packages that you use and I've been using TradingView and I just want to take you through a few of the other types of Fibonacci you could possibly use and this is going to be like I say probably findable in any of your charting packages but they can also provide some useful analysis for you. So in trading view, if we go to the top left hand side, okay, we can see some different types of tools and we've got different types of Fibonacci ones. We've got our retracement that we've seen. We've got a trend based Fibonacci extension. And if we scroll down, we've got Fibonacci speed resistance fan. We've got a trend based Fibonacci on time. We've got Fibonacci arcs and wedges, spirals, circles a whole host of things that you can dive into and learn about i personally don't use any of those other ones sometimes i'll look at the time one and mostly i will also use the trend based fibonacci extension we'll have a quick look at the time one and it's taking a, a move across time and breaking it into those fibonacci uh, setups all you have to do is click on the one you want and again you can use the high and low principle to draw our things then we're going to bring that line back 
as you can see it's broken out the different zones of Fibonacci percentages and we just drag that a little bit forwards we can see how long it thinks the next uh, time zone is going to last in terms of price action and that's going from September all the way through to February of next year 2022 so that's one way of using Fibonacci in a time based structure and we can also like I say use it on trends and that's the one I most often use after the simple um, standard uh, Fibonacci tool so again we go up to the left hand side we click on the icon we want a trend based Fibonacci extension and this is to create a Fibonacci lines based off the trend so we find our high and lows and this is NVIDIA on a daily chart we drag that back like so and all of a sudden we've got a trend based Fibonacci setup and again we can see some great levels there around the $186 where the price bounced and again at 38.2 where there was a lot of noise and resistance so another way of using Fibonacci using the strength of the trend to get the appropriate lines and again it will forward project as well because of the percentage calculation potential target numbers so here we got $260 to the upside if it can break on upwards so like I said there's lots you can do and there's some very colorful ones just draw them on you know as you wish you know learn about them use them like I said I don't really get into these ones they're not for me it's not my style of trading but those other ones great for finding support resistance potential targets great for trade and risk management some people create strategies out of those I'm more a user on the risk management side of things so I hope you've enjoyed that brief look into the world of Fibonacci it's a great fantastic tool and like I said previously I like to use it for trade and risk management target setting more than an actual trading strategy but there's great information out there you know, if you want to find out more about strategies and implementing it into your trading and if you want to find out any more about technical analysis and the stuff that I use I'll put a link in the description below and love to hear back from you do you use Fibonacci how do you use Fibonacci how do you find it it does seem peculiar but it does also seem to work like I say let me know in those comments below if you like today's video please give us the thumbs up don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell buttons to receive future notification of content I'm going to produce just like this and all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching good luck with the trading and I'll see you in the next video